Ahmed. May I ask you, where are you from? Uh, yes, um, I'm originally from Afghanistan. Hello, my name is Ahmad. I'm here to show you how to repair drywall the proper way. Not only one way, but I will show you guys how to do it three way. And welcome to my channel. The tools that I brought with me to repair these walls are, of course, I brought a, a utility knife, a tape if I need it, uh, a piece of wood, what I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with this piece of wood. I have a roller for painting, sanding, to make sure it's smooth. Then I have some screws to anchor this wood onto the wall. Then I have my mud pan and a mud knife when we start getting mudding to so we use that. And I brought some tape. So uh, on one of these patches, I'll use tape to uh, do the job properly. And I brought a hair dryer to make this whole process faster. And um, so I'm gonna begin by showing you these three holes that I'll patch uh, different ways. Um, so I'm show you guys how to patch it three different ways of how to repair a drywall. So we have three patches. This first patch, which I will show you how to do, is called the old fashioned way of patching, uh, which I'm gonna start off with this. On this, what I have to do, so I'm gonna cut this thing square in order to install a square piece of drywall. So I'm cutting this part out and then make this into um, a square Okay, so now we have the hole cut up perfectly square. I'm going to cut another piece of drywall the same size as this. Then I, I will insert that in here to make this patch. So I'm getting a piece of drywall, which I'm measuring it from up here. And then I'm gonna measure it from this side. And then I'm making this the square patch. So this is the patch that I cut to fit in here. I have to cut a little bit more at the bottom to get a good, nice, tight fit. Now we have the perfect patch right here, the same size. So now what we'll do is we will have something in here to hold this, to, to uh, hold this piece. So now I'm inserting a piece of wood in the back of this to hold this drywall from not falling in the back. Make sure that the nail is sunk in because if not, that will, that will show up. Now it's perfectly flush here. Oh yeah, it's perfectly flush to the wall. So now it's clean. Now we're gonna start insert this piece that I cut. And now we're gonna screw this piece on here Make sure that the screws are sunk in. That's important because if not, they will show up at the end of the, your job. So this is ready to uh, put some tape around the edges and put drywall a compound over it. All right, here's another way to repair a wall. This little mesh uh, metal uh, piece, all you have to do is really take this little sticker off of it and this was big, I cut it a little short because the, ho the hole is not really that big. So I'm putting this over here and I'm sticking to this. Then I'm applying drywall compound over this. 
But the interesting thing about this is this have a little hose in here which the drywall compound will go through this hose and create a little wall behind it. So it's safe as far as uh, behind of it, it's not fragile. Now we're gonna go to my favorite patch is hot patch. For the hot patch, uh, we have to cut it square and insert another piece of drywall. So I'm drawing a little square line and I'm cutting this out. So this hole is ready now. I'm going to cut a piece of drywall one inch bigger all the way around. And this is called the hot patch. This one doesn't need for me to insert a piece of wood in the back. Uh, so here's my drywall as I'm trying to cut a piece this big. Okay, so I have this piece cut one inch bigger than this hole all the way around. But I'm, now I'm getting ready to flip this and measure this inside piece. Okay, now I'm gonna mark these lines together on the back of the drywall. Okay, now what I'm doing is I'm only cutting the back of the drywall but leaving the paper in the front uh, attached to this. So I'm doing a little bit cut, not all the way through. Okay, in order to get this, you flip it and you rip. See, the paper on the front is still here. Make sure you don't rip your paper. It's really easy to come off. So now, this is my other patch, which I'm putting some drywall compound around it and then just mudding it to the wall. Now I'm mixing the drywall compound uh, and I'll show you guys how to mud this properly. Uh, I'm using 45 minute mud. Uh, it's a little longer time to dry, but guess what? I have the hair dryer. We're gonna speed this process a little faster. Um, so I'm getting some mud in here. Drywall compound, some people call it mud. Or some water. And mixing. Need more water. And this is how you mix mud. You have to go back and forth so this knife can go in between it and will take water all the way through it. I might have to do this a couple of times. is mixed up really nicely and it's ready to be applied on the wall. On this first patch I have to insert uh, a little bit dry uh, drywall tape. So I'm mudding this. Make sure there's a lot of mud on it. I'm using the tape and the mud tape
where the joints were, I'm putting some tape on here to be safe. Make sure that I don't crack again. Put a little piece right there. So there's a crack. This process requires of uh, mudding twice. The first one, put it on pretty thin, so you don't have to do a lot, whole lot of sanding. Okay, that's good for the first one. And the second patch right here is easy. Just apply mud all the way around but make sure you push the mud because these have little holes the drywall compound goes through and creates a little wall in the behind this uh metal mesh so we still want to put it thin make sure we cover around the edges of the metal real good make sure you hold your knife hard on one side soft on the other side in order for you to create a Nice mud work. So this requires another coat of mudding. So I'm just gonna let this dry and come back. Now the hot patch. What I'm going to do with this hot patch is I have my mud here and I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit all over these edges. So when this piece right here hit that edge, it's gonna lock in all of them together. And then I'm putting drywall mud all the way around it where this one inch marks are. I'm putting on kind of thick because I, I can always squeeze it back off. So now uh, we have mud and I'm putting this back on here. Okay, we're gonna kind of pull this a little tight. Okay, now this is ready to dry. Once it's dry, we're gonna apply another coat of uh, the drywall compound to make sure that you don't see any seams or patches or anything. I'm applying the second coat of uh, mud now. Ahmed, may I ask you, where are you from? Uh, yes, um, I'm originally from Afghanistan and I lived in America since age 13. Before that, I was in Afghanistan. How was the life like in Afghanistan? Oh, life was great in Afghanistan. Um, um, I used to love uh, living there. Life was wonderful. Um, I grew up um, going to school. My father was big on education. And my favorite hobby was flying kites. I flew a lot of kites in my childhood growing up. Uh, that was my main sport, uh, the kite fighting. I used to make my own kites, go uh, fly for a challenge. And I used to make my own strings. Um, I used to make this string that when you fly kites, it will, it will cut the string within a second. Uh, because I, I put glass on my string. I used to mix, uh, I used to crush glass with glue and add some color into it, then put it all over my string. Then when I'm challenging someone um, flying kites, um, I can cut the string really quickly. And then the other thing, my thing was, we used to play marble. This marble challenge with our neighborhood kids, everybody had marble, but the marble challenge is almost like shooting pool. You have to have a hole in the ground and then everybody's got a marble. You put your marble, whoever is the furthest to start first. 
the object of this game is you have to get your marble and thump it and hit the other person's marble. Then if you hit that first marble, they're out. So yeah, the marble game, I used to love that. I mean, I used to challenge my neighborhood kids. Everybody had their own marble game. Let's go to work. And, you know, those are, are the little things that we used to uh, do and love and enjoy. We don't have no uh, phones or tablets or anything like that, but you know, those are a lot of the things that we used to enjoy. And one thing about the school, that I used to love to go to school is we had canteen at the, at the school. So uh, I just couldn't wait to go to school so I can go to canteen. But the canteen have this, this special ice creams and these candies and stuff that you can buy, you know. It, it was at lunchtime I couldn't wait so I can skip lunch and go straight to the canteen and buy me a little something. FNAF Afghanistan was great. Um, we, I mean, we lived pretty happy, grew up happy, uh, we went to school. I remember my sisters going to school, and after school we had, you know, that family gathering and eating dinner together, and life was really good when I grew up in Afghanistan, I can honestly say that. So now we are sanding our work to see how, uh, how it is, and we'll put one coat of paint on this, uh, then we will determine see how our work looks. When you sand, make sure not to uh, put your sander so hard to take all the drywall compound back off. Uh, so you gotta be careful how you sand. So now we are painting uh, one coat and determine see how our work looks. So Ahmed, which part of Afghanistan you lived before with your um, family? We lived in Kabul, Afghanistan. But my parents, uh, that were uh, raised up and born all their family in the past seven generation in Paktia, Afghanistan. Paktia is like my last name. My last name is Paktia Wall. And it's unique that how we have a uh, same last name as our town. Uh, this is uh, a unique story. My father was an exchange student from Afghanistan to America before we were born, before he got married. In Afghanistan back then, no one had last name. Everyone went by the first name and middle name. But the application for exchange student required the last name. So my father had to have a last name in order to fill up the application. So he made this last name, Paktia Wall. And the wall part is like, you know how you say it, North Carolinian? So we're Paktia Wallinians. And this is the first original last name that my father came up with. That was part of my life story and thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that like button and as you can see we are doing a pretty good job.